Hello everyone, welcome back to Signature Solar. I'm Kelly, and today we're not just walking you through an installation, we're also showing you how to commission your EG4 18K PV hybrid solar inverter with the EG4 PowerPro wall mount all weather outdoor battery. This is the ultimate energy storage system for DIYers, energy enthusiasts, and anyone looking to take control over their electricity bills. We've already given you an overview of the 18K inverter and the PowerPro wall mount battery in previous videos. If you're looking for an in-depth view into either of these units separately, feel free to check out those in the links below. When you have successfully installed the 18K inverter with the PowerPro wall mount and have connected to the grid if you've chosen to do that, you can take full advantage of this power pair optimizing your ESS. An ESS is an energy storage system that stores energy from multiple power sources to be used when you need it later, giving you a reservoir of power, independence from the grid, and potential savings on your utility bills. These two units work seamlessly to make this happen. You're looking at energy independence, peak shaving, load leveling, and a big boost to your eco-friendly credits. Let's break it down into various advantages and applications. First off, you have energy independence with an uninterrupted power supply. With an ESS, you're less dependent on the grid, which means fewer power outages affecting you. Secondly, you have maximized savings called peak shaving. By using stored energy during peak times when electricity costs are higher, you can save even more on your energy bills. In some locations, electricity is higher during the day, so you could configure your settings to use batteries during the day when electricity is high, and charge your batteries at night when using the grid when electricity costs are lower. Third, load leveling. When power generation facilities ramp up and down to keep up with the energy changing demand for electricity, it puts stress on the system. ESS can help flatten out the demand curve by charging your batteries when electrical demand is low and discharging when it's high, maintaining a steady and consistent level of electricity consumption throughout the day. Another advantage is that it can supplement renewables. Renewable energies, such as solar panels or wind turbines, only produce electricity when the sun is out or when the wind is blowing. Supplementing these with ESS allows users to take advantage of the electricity that is generated when the renewable energy technologies are not producing electricity. When you pair the EG4 18K inverter and EG4 PowerPro wall mount battery with a specially designed conduit box and perfectly aligning knockouts, you've got a plug and play energy powerhouse. This saves you hours at the hardware store and fabrication of a standard chaseway. It's like the perfect combination of the solar world. They're easy to install with quick connect ports for straightforward, hassle-free, and universally safe assembly, which we will soon see. Plus, they come with a multitude of certifications like the 9540 to assure you of their safety and quality. Don't forget about rapid shutdown. Both of these units adhere to any C code compliance and feature remote safety shutdown system accessible through multiple easy access options. The built-in total rapid shutdown function effectively and immediately shuts down everything connected, your PV arrays, your inverter, and batteries giving the ESS the ultimate in safety for your first responders. With EG4's dedication to safety and reliability, you can have peace of mind as you embrace renewable energy. The versatility is impressive too. You can customize your ESS according to your energy needs. For example, combining one 18K PV inverter with one PowerPro wall mount yields a 12 kilowatt output capacity and 14.3 kilowatt hour storage. You can even scale it up by adding up to five wall mount units per inverter for even more storage. Just note that you'll need at least two power pros to fully power a home. You can even parallel up to 10 18K PV inverters with each inverter being connected to up to five power pros. Talk about an enterprise of energy. The 18K PV inverter efficiently converts solar power into electricity and the PowerPro wall mount stores the surplus for nighttime use or during grid failures. With a 200 amp whole house transfer switch inside, you can power your whole house when the grid goes down. These two communicate seamlessly, optimizing your energy usage around the clock. Let's take a quick look at the PV modules that we will be including in this installation. 
Here you see two arrays of the same type of panels, the same size and the same power output, meaning they can be connected in parallel inside of our inverter if we desire. Each of these arrays have four 460 watt blue sun panels at 50 VOC connected in series, yielding about 200 open current voltage and 11.2 short circuit current per array. Before we dive into our installation, let's talk components. EG4 will have all of the components neatly packed. It's essential to make sure that your unit came with everything you see on the packing list found on pages six and seven of your manuals and to inspect everything thoroughly to ensure no damage occurred during shipping. Notice there are only a few components that have to be put together. It's a truly simple installation. We can do this. Now that we have taken a look at our components, let's go over our pre-installation preparations. Always use proper personal protective equipment and follow all safety guidelines. Make sure you've got your screwdrivers, wire strippers, ferrules, crimpers, and of course, your safety gear. Also, have your user manual handy. It's your best friend throughout this process. Let me draw your attention also to the QR code at the bottom right of the manual. You can scan this with your phone or computer to get the most updated version of the manual. I highly recommend making sure you are using the most updated version. When selecting a location for your ESS installation, you have a lot of options since both of these products are outdoor rated. Just make sure they will be protected from direct sunlight and snow accumulation. There's no need to worry about the conduit box either because the cables and connections are all rain tight. Remember, airflow is key, so be sure to pick a well-ventilated spot, whether installing inside or outside. It's highly recommended that your battery has at least 12 inch clearance on each side once installed to make it easy to access your side panels. You will also need to have a sturdy backing since the 18K weighs approximately 120 pounds and the wall mount battery weighs about 300 pounds. There are multiple configurations in which these units can be installed. In this video, we will install the inverter on top of the battery with a conduit box in between. Please check the manual for help on other installation configurations. Once we have our perfect location selected, we want to place the battery mounting bracket on the wall at a minimum height of 28.0625 inches. That's 28 and 1 16th inches from the ground. This height will have the battery installed on the bracket, but also sitting on the ground. You may want to adjust this height slightly depending on your location. Use a level to ensure it's straight and mark the holes for drilling. I have used a 5 16 inch bit to drill our holes more than two inches deep. We're using all six holes for the mounting bracket, but I would start by putting all three holes in the bottom bracket and leaving the top two to line up your X bracket so that they can be mounted behind. Remember, if you're not mounting into concrete, make sure to anchor the lag bolts into studs for added support, especially since our battery is a hefty 300 pounds. Next, align the provided X bracket with the holes on the mounting bracket. Secure both to the wall using the same hardware. The X bracket should be against the wall behind the mounting plate. It's time to attach the inverter mounting bracket to the X bracket, matching the mounting bracket to the holes on the X bracket. Secure them both to the wall with the X bracket behind the mounting bracket. All right, team, it's time to flex those muscles. These batteries pack a punch in the weight department, so let's play it safe with the lift team. Trust me, your back will thank you later. Dollies or hand trucks can help make this process easier. Big shout out to my buddies, David and Frankie from EG4, who are here to lend a hand, literally. Thanks, guys. Now, let's get that PowerPro wall mount battery lifted and securely hooked onto the front flange of the mounting bracket. Secure the battery to the bracket on the sides with the four included screws. Before we attach the conduit box to the battery, notice that it has many knockouts. These knockouts match up perfectly with the knockouts of the 18K. Decide which knockouts you will be needing and punch them out first or wait until you are sure and punch out while attached. I have decided that these are the only holes we will need to punch out for this installation. Attach the conduit box to the top of the wall mount battery Using this hardware provided, tighten down to secure the units together. 
Super, super easy. Next, attach the 18K PV to the inverter mounting bracket, making sure to align the holes so that they match those on the conduit box. Secure them together using the provided hardware. Finally, don't forget to ground your system. We'll attach a grounding conductor from the M6 screw on your battery to your equipment grounding system in your inverter. We'll run this up through our knockouts in our inverter and I'm going to go ahead and apply a chase nipple where my knockouts are so that I can run it up through that. This will run straight up and attach to our PE bus bar here. Give it a slight tug to make sure it's in securely. Now that we have each of our units mounted, we're going to begin to hook everything up. Make sure everything's turned off. Your PV disconnect, your breakers on the inverter, the on off button, and the battery, you need to flip its breakers as well. You may want to use a voltmeter to confirm there's no voltage present if you have anything hooked up at all. Also, be sure to double check your string sizes with their maximum voltage and maximum current ratings. As you may recall from our 18K inverter video, we can have two strings connected in parallel at MPPT number one with a max amp rating of 25 amps and two more strings, MPPT number two and MPPT number three with a max of 15 amps each. Each of these strings have a max of 600 volts. Now, before we run our PV wires into our inverter, you need to make sure that you're code compliant. All of your PV wires should be coming from your array through metal conduit to a PV disconnect between your array and your inverter, and then come from metal or metal clad conduit into your inverter or conduit box. We have a tech bench set up today, so we don't have ours running through um, metal or we don't have a PV disconnect. Um, but to be code compliant, you need to make sure that you include those in your system. We will go ahead and run these through a side knockout in our conduit box and then straight up to our MPP number one for our PV inputs. Always best practice to run your wires from the conduit box straight up into the input. So we'll connect these at MPPT number one uh, in the first two slots, red to positive and black to negative. The easiest way to do this is to take a small flathead screwdriver and to insert it above your circle input Lift it up gently and then push your wires with your ferruled ends into the circle. You'll know it's in there well when you give it a gently, gentle tug and it does not come out. Do the same thing black to negative right next to it. And we'll do the same thing for our second array um, right next to these for paralleling our strings. Let's keep wiring. Again, make sure everything is off. Double check your breakers on your inverter, your battery, and your PV disconnect. Let's get ready to route the two sets of two aught power cables that came in the box with your battery. Two sets of cables helps protect against surges that can be up to 250 amps. One end has an all-weather quick connect in, which goes to your battery, while the other end is stripped, exposing the stranded wires and will be secured into the inverter. Let's connect our cables to our battery first. It's easiest to route them through the conduit box first and connect them to your battery. We'll do red to the positive side, which is on the right side of your battery. We'll remove the protective caps. And then when these click in, got a solid connection. Our black goes to the left side of the battery, which is our negative side. Route those through the conduit box. Remove our protective caps. And snap them into place. We'll route these up through our inverter 
we'll install another chase nipple and again we want our battery connections to come straight up from the conduit box into our inputs we'll connect these red to positive and black to negative so you want to make sure that all of your strands are together neatly so that you don't have any outliers that might cause an arc. Then we'll tighten these down with an M8 hex wrench, torque wrench. All right, then we'll take our black, connect it to battery negative. Now to get it communicating with your inverter. Again, make sure everything is off. We'll first remove the ID plate, then we will set our BMS communication protocol. We'll set all the dip switches to ID zero, which is all switches in the up position. Once the dip switch is changed, we need to restart the battery with only the BMS power button. To enter the protocol setting, we will hold the return key, which is the second button from the right, for five seconds. We will select the CAN protocol by using the down arrow and pressing return. Select LUX by using the down arrow, then press return. So we'll connect our communication cable, so it says BATCOM. Now, no external RSD initiator is needed if you have installed your system outside. However, if your system is indoors or your AHG deems it necessary, you can wire an external emergency stop button directly into the inverter here at pins SW and plus 12. If you want to use a standard Ethernet cable, this emergency stop button will be wired using pins 3 and 6 wired to the normally open contacts to communicate the emergency stop information. This option on the 18K in the wall mount battery is the first of its kind, allowing you to shut down everything, the PV array, the inverter, and the battery with the simple push of a button. Now, if not using an external e-stop button, you will need to have a jumper cable that you will wire in from your SW to your plus 12 ports for normal operation. We now have our PV module connected to our inverter, our inverter to our battery, and the communication cable plugged in. We can now effectively use solar to charge the battery, where the BMS on the inverter will know how fast to charge and how much to charge with appropriate settings. The last thing we need to do is connect to our loads, our critical load panel or backup panels, so that we can use solar power to run our loads as well as charge our batteries. Make sure you have a certified electrician to help you set up your panel on the AC side of things, and be sure to follow all NEC local codes and safety guidelines. When the electrician comes to your home, they will essentially be connecting wires from the load section to your loads or backup panel. Then if you want to be connected to the grid, those will connect here. Again, make sure all breakers are in the off position and everything is powered off before making any panel connections. You can also connect a generator here or use this input for AC coupling or smart loads, which allows for the intelligent operation of certain appliances depending on real-time access to energy usage data. Before we begin adjusting any settings, especially if this is a completely new setup for you, it would be a great idea to update the BMS on your battery as well as the firmware on your inverter. We will update our BMS via the computer and I'll show you how to update your inverter remotely through the app. Now that we've walked you through the installation of our ESS with our 18K and our wall mount battery, it's time to start commissioning our system. Before you get started though, you wanna make sure that you have the most updated firmware for your battery and for your 18K, and we've got Braden here from EG4 to walk us through the commissioning of our system.
Thanks, Kelly. Let's get started. You'll need a laptop, you'll want an RS-485 to USB cable, an RS-232 cable, and you'll want to have the Wi-Fi dongle that comes with your 18K PV. Alrighty, so the first thing you want to do is plug in your RS-485 to USB cable to your battery and your laptop. Then you want to navigate to eg4electronics.com and under the resource tab, if you click firmware, you will be able to download a zip file that contains all of the firmwares for the WPower 16280 AW, which is the All Weather Power Pro battery. Once you extract the zip file, you'll be given a handful of firmwares to choose from. For our PowerPro ESS, we want to go into the PowerPro RSD firmware. We do have some guides here if you would like written material. And the first update we want to do is RS-485. So we want to go ahead and run this application, and we'll see this window pop up. You want to change your language to English, and then select your COM port. This is COM4 for us, it may be different for you. If you're unable to locate what COM port it is, go to Device Manager, and from there you'll be able to see uh, which COM port that you're connected to. If you don't see any COM ports pop up, make sure that your battery is online, that your connection is secure, and then close and reopen the BMS programming tool. From here, we want to open the serial port, and it will ask us to reset our BMS. So let's go over here real quick. I'm gonna press the switch to turn our BMS off. Give it a moment. And then we'll push the switch back in and that will have reset our BMS. You'll see that the pop-up window is now down, but our serial port is still open. Now from here, we have the file to load. We're gonna browse. And from here, let's go back out to the firmware. And under the RS-485, you'll find the bin that you're looking for. So open up that bin file and select send. As we can see, the file has trans submitted successfully. So from here we can go ahead and close and we are able to close the serial port and exit out of BMS programming tools. Alrighty, so the next step that we want to do is to run the RS-232 updater. Now you'll want to plug the RS-232 to USB cable into your laptop and the battery, this time on the battery comms port instead of the CAN port. So you'll run the RS-232 updater and you'll be presented with this window. From here, click Import Hex, and you'll want to navigate to the firmware folder, and inside there, RS-232, you'll be presented with a hex file. You'll want to run that. Make sure you're on your correct COM port. If you have multiple to select from, you can go to Device Manager and uh, figure out which one you need. And you want to open your COM port and start the update. Alrighty, we see that our update is finished and we can exit the bootloader. So we'll close the COM port, go ahead and exit out of that. And now our battery has been updated with both firmwares for communication RSD. Next, we want to update the inverters firmware. So in the app, go to download firmware. And then in the top right, you'll want to press the download button when you have your inverter selected. Once you see a check mark on all of the hex files, you will go to your Wi-Fi and you will change from your normal network to the dongle. Back on the app, once our dongle is connected, we can see in the top right, we'll click connect to device and update TCP connect. Then we will go to set in the bottom right. And at the bottom, we can press Update Firmware. This will take us to a screen where we have a big Update Firmware button. And once we press that, our inverter should start getting a transmission of the first file we have here. Alrighty, so our update is almost complete here. 
This is just the transmission process of the firmware from the phone to the inverter. So once this goes through completely, you'll see a cooldown on the second one. And that cooldown is so that the inverter has a chance to actually overwrite the previous firmware. You'll see on your inverter screen um, a installation process. Once that is complete, you can either back out of this and go back in to update the second firmware, or you can wait for the cooldown to finish and it will start updating with the second part of the firmware. So our firmware is almost complete. Once it is complete, again, you wanna wait for the installation uh, and you'll be able to see that on your inverter's face. But once the inverter has installed both halves of the firmware, then it is ready to go as an ESS system. Alrighty, now we're going to commission the unit. So on the screen, if we go over to the far right on the bottom, we can go to the settings and under basic, this is where we're going to click on zero export. And we wanna make sure that our maximum export to grid is zero. This is the settings we're gonna go through for self-consumption. So once we get that, uh, you can set it, set okay. We'll go down to charge. And under charge, we want to check according to SOC and voltage, as well as use SOC or BAT voltage, depending on whether we have a open loop or closed loop lithium or lead acid. If you have a closed loop lithium system, you can use SOC, otherwise you want to use your battery voltage. Your battery current limit is 250 to zero. Um, that's settable on the inverter. If you do have a closed loop lithium system, um, and that value is lower on your battery specs, then that will be controlled by the BMS. If you'd like to use AC charge, you can as well and set the AC charge power. The according to SOC volt will allow you to control how much you charge the batteries uh, from AC. And if you have that unchecked, you can choose the time that you choose uh, that you charge the batteries from AC. So we'll go down. You can also click charge first on PV. And what that will do is it will prioritize charging the batteries with PV as opposed to powering loads. Uh, we're gonna leave that unchecked. You can also change, of course, the SOC or voltage values for that. If you're using open loop lithium or lead acid batteries, you will need to set your absorb voltage, float voltage, and derate voltage to the specifications on your battery. Under generator, if you do have a generator in your self-consumption system, then you'll want to put in your generator specs. You can also use the start and stop voltage or SOC to control um, the dry contacts to start and stop your generator. Under discharge, again at the top, we can choose SOC or voltage. Again, since I'm in open uh, closed loop lithium, I'm going to use SOC. The discharge current limit is how much you're going to discharge from your batteries as a maximum. Again, um, it goes up to 250, and if your batteries have a lower value um, and you're at a closed loop lithium system, that will override and the BMS will control it. You can choose the cutoff percentages as well as a voltage for whether your system is on grid or off grid. This will allow you to preserve battery charge for um, a dark start or in the event that your um, grid goes out, you want to have extra charge in the background. Force discharge will allow you to discharge your battery during uh, certain time frames or at certain percentages of batteries. Um, and that will allow you to kind of offset if you have tiered um, kilowatt hour prices. That's what that's beneficial for, but since we're in self-consumption, we're not going to worry about peak load shaving. And again, that's some more settings for um, grid peak shaving that's a little bit more control. And there's also smart loads if you have those. Under advanced, there are a lot of settings to work through here, so we're going to go through uh, with fine comb. 
So PV input, if you do have solar, you want to select the MPPTs that you have. You'll have to input a password, which by default is five zeros. And you'll be able to choose. So since we have PV on the first MPPT, we're gonna do PV1 only. We don't wanna mess with the CT or Modbus address. Most of these settings, meter type, we will leave that as well. Uh, but we wanna make sure that our off-grid output is on. This will allow the inverter to operate as a UPS. Um, you also wanna make sure you have your run without grid on. Um, that also contributes to your inverter operating as a UPS. Seamless switch will allow your inverter to have a transfer time uh, at about 10 milliseconds or below, which will make sure that things like your oven clock stay on, your computer stay on. When your grid goes down and you go in UPS mode, um, you won't have to reset those. Um, you also want to turn on PV arc if you have uh, solar in your system, and that will um, put AFCI protection on your inverter that will enable that. Under battery type, there is lithium and lead acid. Lead acid operates as a user defined. That's where you would go back and use battery voltage on those settings. Um, even if you have a lithium system, but you are using open loop, um, you would select lead acid and do that. Since I have an EG4 battery hooked up to the system, I'm going to use the lithium setting and that will be the perfect one for our ESS here. If you do use open loop system, you'll also want to make sure that you set the amp hour capacity there. Under here, if you have multiple inverters, you will see the parallel system settings. And there you go. That's all the settings you need to set up self consumption on your 18 kPV ESS system. Once everything's up and running, you can monitor your system's performance through the dedicated monitoring app. It's a great way to track energy production, consumption, and battery levels. You can even stay up to date with firmware updates and change settings through the app when needed. Become part of the renewable energy movement. Explore EG4 Electronics' range of solutions at SignatureSolar.com and say hello to a future that's not just clean, but also cost efficient. Break free from the grid and be a part of the movement towards a sustainable and self-sufficient future. Complete energy self-reliance has never been easier. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for the latest from Signature Solar. Remember, Signature Solar is here to support you at every step. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or contact our sales or technical support teams. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kelly with Signature Solar, where we believe that solar is for everyone.